welcome everyone welcome to this uh, video we're going to discuss now the measuring the cost of living chapter 24 uh, this is a book of principles of economics of Gregory Mank so first I want to introduce some important questions regarding uh, time and prices so when we talk about 19 31 we know that we are going after uh, the Great Depression that was suffered in 1929 in that specific point uh, maybe we we didn't watch this baseball player however we have heard about Babe Ruth the salary of that player was around eighty thousand dollars annually so at that time was an extraordinary payment it was like one of the best was actually was one of the best players paid at that time when you compare with 2012 when the median salary is 1.9 million and actually a rot uh, received at that time 30 million so you see that it was a great great difference however we know that even without knowing specific about inflation about index uh, index of prices we know that we need to think about the capacity of buying goods at that time we are talking about the possibility of purchasing goods so then in 1931 naturally with a nickel you got ice cream cone then less than a dollar naturally then at Babe Ruth time prices was definitely much lower than today than today so it's not like kind of easy to answer the question who got the best standard of living so during this chapter we will have an idea how economists measure the overall cost of living and at the end of the day they can compare situation of dollars in different in different points of time so then we are going to focus on the comparison in terms of purchasing power first we need to clarify the concept of consumer price index this specific index provide us the possibility to find a way to make comparisons among years so naturally the CPI is used for monitor changes in the cost of living, living over time so if CPI rises naturally you need to spend more money to achieve the same standard of living so then inflation at the end represent a situation when the prices are rising or the CPI is rising imagine a CPI as a basket of, of goods and services that you need to to buy so then when the basket in general increases the price is when one when we talk about inflation so then the inflation rate is just the percentage change in the price level from previous period so naturally if the CPI increased we are talking about inflation if it goes down we talk about deflation so then uh, before in the previous chapter as you probably remember we saw prices with deflator then uh, actually inflation rate is more used because due to it considers the goods and services bought by consumers and remember the deflator it comes from the comparison of the nominal GDP with the nominal with the real GDP then we are taking into account all goods and services produced in the determined uh, period of time but inflation rate is just taking into account the situation of consumers so with this uh, situation if we have a number that we just need to multiply this in the term in year and we're going to bring that value to the current value 
naturally we are going to be able to make comparison between two periods of time. So then, the consumer price index measure the overall cost of the goods and services bought by a typical consumer. So naturally, it doesn't include like maybe luxurious goods or services that a normal consumer will uh, will buy, right? And the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the BLS, this is a part of the Department of Labor, computes and reports the consumer price index during uh, different periods of time, usually monthly, right? And then we are going to, we're going to make like some comparison with the GDP deflator because at the end of the day, they measure the same thing. So here a numerical example to understand a little bit better. So we're going to create like a CPI for a specific basket of goods. And this basket, as we are seeing here, you fix the quantity of goods. In this case, we're going to imagine an economy of two goods. As usual, we're going to minimize the situation of the world in just uh, two goods to make the ideas much uh, like definitely more clear so here we have a basket of four hot dogs and two hamburgers so this is the normal consumption for a typical consumer so then uh, obviously the Bureau of Labor Statistics the BLS they have a data of thousands of goods and services so this we are just imagine the situation of hot dogs and hamburgers so here is the step two for uh, the construction of the CPI so here we have the, the price of hot dogs and the price of hamburgers throughout different years. So we have the situation of 2013 to 2015. So here we have the price of hot dogs of $1 and the price of hamburgers of $2. And naturally you see here an increase for all two goods during time. So then here we have the, the step three which is going to be the, the, the computation of the cost of the baskets of goods in each year. So then we are going to take this year, this basket as a base and we are going to multiply all the time the same four hot dogs and the same two hamburgers with the only difference that instead of multiplying for uh, the same price, you're going to multiply for the values of each year. So here you find that the basket is going to be 8, then 14, then 20. And then after uh, determining the value of e, this basket, you are going to to take um, the computer, the sorry, the consumer price index in, in each year. So as the base year is 2013, naturally the index should be 100. So it's going to be 8, which is natural the value of the basket during that year over the base year, which is exactly the same is going to be one times 100 is going to be 100. Then moving with 14, which is the value of the, the basket for 2014 over the basket in 2013, then you have the, the index or, or the CPI of 175. And then for the last one should be 20 over 8 times 100 should be 250. Then we already have the CPI for each year. Remember, as you have noticed, the base year is actually uh, 100 all the time because you are comparing naturally the basket in the same year. And the step five, we need to use the consumer price index to compute the inflation, which is just a change. Remember, the change is going to be final value minus initial value over initial value times 100. And then you see an increase of 75% of the basket from one uh, from one uh, one year to another. So 2014 compared with 2013. And then for 2015, we are going to have 43% increase. So then uh, we know that the step one 
already we have already noticed that should be the price of baskets of goods and services in current year over the price of basket in base year so this time should be all the time should be 8 times 100 and the inflation rate is not more than the CPI 2 minus CPI 1 over CPI 1 times 100 then we already know that well, not is that we are just comparing two goods and the B, the Bureau of Statistics of Labor collects a uh, thousand of goods and services every month and the CPI you will notice monthly in TV and newspaper is not like isolated uh, term is naturally something that it appears a lot in media and then uh, actually BLS calculates not just for US but also for specific important areas as for example Boston, New York and LA and then for specific sectors as well so we have different divisions for example food, clothing and energy and we have another, another index that is uh, used as well which is called the PPI which is the producer price index which is just the cost of basket of goods and services bought by firms rather than consumers and then uh, actually because pr producers at a certain point they need to uh, transmit the prices that they buy as inputs and they put in the prices uh, of the outcomes and actually it's a transmission so then the PPI should be reflected at the end of the day in the CPI as well uh, and what is in the CPI's basket it tries to include all the goods and services that typical consumer buys so normal quantities that a consumer buys a so specific quantity so here is the the proportion how CPI is calculated so as you can see here a more part of that is 41 percent it belongs to housing and then inside this 41 percent of the CPI we have the 32 which is the cost of shelter and then we have fuel and other utilities 5% and the last part of household furnishing and operation then we know that transportation is the second most important representation of spending for a uh, typical consumer a family so it should be 17% of poor transportation as cars gasoline buses subway etc and then we have food and beverages which uh, it belongs or it has 15 percent we what we have here is eight percent at home six percent away from home and one percent for alcoholic beverages so this is the the situation as you can see here we have education medical care recreation apparel and other goods and services so then um, the idea is like how incomes must rise to maintain a constant standard of living because obviously if you receive a higher salary but the price is going over that increase naturally your standard of living will decrease so it's something really important to highlight here it's like CPI is not a perfect measure of standard of living how come? because first we present a substitution bias so some prices rise more than others so what does it mean so naturally some consumers tend to consume more of those goods that are cheaper in comparative terms so the CPI assumes just a fixed quantity of goods in the basket as we said hot dogs and hamburgers what about the hot dog prices uh, increase naturally you're going to uh, substitute in some part the consumption of hot dogs for hamburgers so then maybe your standard of living is exactly the same but for the CPI terms is not so naturally it ignores the possibility of consumer substitution so overstates the increase of cost of living so the simple example should be that we have apple and pears and consumer buy more apples so BLS constructs the basket of goods it includes more apples than pears but then imagine that now pears are cheaper than apples what's going to happen naturally consumers buy more pears than apples so as BLS uses a fixed basket it assumes that consumers buy the same quantity of apples what is completely wrong because of the substitution so then 
larger inflation that really it is because consumers they are avoiding uh, consuming that kind of products so this is the substitution bias issue introduction of new goods so then there are more variety to choose at the beginning those goods are not considered but maybe you are going to buy them so then you have more options usually and then the cost of living is lower because you can find out other goods that they are not being uh, taken into account for that CPI other should be the unmeasured quality change because for example the worst quality of a good maybe something that is not going the same quality of that specific device and that is not reflected in CPI because it just take into account changes in prices not in quality of the goods then um, you can see that the point is actually a bias should be around one percent but now the, due to different measurements should be close to 0 0.5 percent then uh, naturally when there is high inflation it goes to panic because actually the purchasing power go down and we're going to make a like parenthesis of monitoring inflation in the internet age so actually some parts as Japan is the normal example they're experiencing uh, negative negative inflation so then people prefer save instead of consume and then inflation is needed to make adjustment in social security benefits or interest payment on bonds so this is why inter inflation is really needed because we are going to make a changes uh, adjustments for that kind of products and for example uh, for this uh, point at this point now 234 million dollars is like the cost of the me the measurement of inflation each year so then there was an interesting work for Roberto Rigobon and Alberto Carvalho in actually to change this kind of uh, track prices which may be kind of difficult to continue with that process and actually as you can see it's really it's really expensive so the project is trying to make some track prices online with a massive database at this time we are we're having like five million of items and so they are, moni they are monitoring 300 online retailers 70 countries is what is called the billion prices project and the BPP is just average all goods available it is not weighted so it's not it does not provide like determined quantity of goods and it comes daily so naturally uh, there is another project of Varian uh, another very famous economist around the world with the projects of Google price index but actually methodology not revealed yet but the idea is like the prices are tracked uh, almost in real time so the idea is like just this parenthesis is just to make some questions about if the normal and traditional measurement should continue or maybe another cheaper and better more uh, more accurate index should be used so it's like this uh, door is open so then we're going to make now some comparison between the GDP deflator versus the consumer price index so we already know that they uh, naturally they they both show a similar history from one side we have the deflator and then the CPI and then uh, the deflator reflects the prices of all goods and services that they are produced domestically on the other side we have the CPI which reflects the price of all prices uh, of all goods and services bought by consumers and then uh, for example from the deflator side we know that we have the price of an airplane sold but then in the CPA naturally a plane is not a normal a typical good for a consumer so this is not taken into account so we see here the second difference and for example the Volvo's prices the Sweden uh, company the car uh, manufacturer uh, naturally the Volvo price is not taken into account in the deflator but for example in poor goods they are actually into the index if they belong to the uh, typical basket of a consumer 
So from the other side, we have the oil price. Definitely is an important player in this, uh, the measurement of prices of the economy. And as imported, maybe it's not included. No, maybe not. I'm sure he's not included. And then in the other side, CPI, definitely it makes an important impact in all kind of things that you can, you can think about it. Uh, for example, the normal one is transportation, but all, always like food and beverages as well because it they requires implicit the, the use of all price for transportation as well. So then we know that this is a fixed basket and then the deflator, uh, the basket changes automatically all the time. So then here we have uh, an important graph. So we have a comparison between the CPI and the GDP deflator. As you can see first, uh, you can have a look at the behavior of the two indexes. They are similar, uh, just like some specific gaps in the final part of 1980s and maybe some other difference 2009. We have in the y-axis the inflation rate person per year. Uh, compared to the CPI and the GDP deflator, you already know that this is comparison one period to the previous one from both sides and the X axis we have natural time. So the, the main explanation for the gap, for example, in 1979, this was because of oil prices. Naturally, CPI, it considered uh, the, the oil prices, but maybe not as the same proportion of the GDP deflator because we are thinking about import import good then that's the case then we're going to 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 try to answer the the question that we start with babe ruth about the the comparison of the two situation in two different points of time so the dollar figures from different times so our attempt here we're going to compare dollar in two different periods of time so let's retake the situation of Babe Ruth so we need to know the level of prices in these two years to make this comparison then we know that the increase of salaries in part it compensates the increase of prices right so for this reason we see that that specific difference but to compare the salary, we can inflate what salary to turn 1931 salary to today dollars. So it should be something like this. So we have the situation, the amount in today's dollars so should be the salary today, which is exactly the same as the salary at that period of time or this amount that we are comparing times an index or uh, a value that we need to multiply to make these uh, two values com comparable. So we have the price level of today and the price level in that year that we compare, which is no more than the CPI in these different two years. So according to the statistics, the CPI in 1931 is 15.2. And then the CPI of 2012, the time of that book, it was 2029.5. So if we just replace the situation of with these two values, we're going to have the salary of 2012 is exactly equal to the salary of 1931 times this relation. So then we have the salary of 2012 dollars is exactly the same as the value of the salary of Babe Ruth times this one. So we're going to make these eight thousand dollars this the value of today so this is the difference the ratio of these two quantities and then we end with around 1.2 million so then so this is actually one third less than the median Yankee salary today and actually this is around four percent what was paid to a rot so then this is because first it represents an overall economic growth so it means that the situation of the economy has improved so salaries has been compensated not only in inflation but only but also in terms of productivity in terms of economic growth so then 
you can see how the increase in comes to athletes compare and naturally better standards for best athletes. So and now make another comparison with the President Hoover's salary of $75,000 close to Babe Ruth and then should be uh, 1.1 around million and if we go with Barack Obama at that time 2012 it was 400,000 so then as you can see for the situation of the presidents maybe is not the same because the, in terms of real terms the purchasing power of President Hoover's was not really bad compared with Barack's Obama. And then, these price indexes are used to correct the effect of inflation and make these two values in different uh, periods of time comparable. It's what we call indexed for inflation. When you say this, uh, this uh, trend this uh, data has been indexed for inflation you are going to be okay because you can compare between years without any travel so for example when you have a contract uh, between unions and firms uh, they include partial complete this indexation to CPI to guarantee an increase uh, every year or every specific period of time to the CPI to maintain or even improve the standard of living. This is the cost of living allowance which is called the COLA and then uh, the wages go up when the CPI rises naturally. And another important um, values are indexed all the time as social security benefits for example they are indexed for the same reason to maintain to keep the situation of standard of living of that people that they receive this kind of subsidies actually this is an important part of the Hollywood situation and something that we have seen uh, throughout newspaper a lot so when we we don't talk about indexation for example we know that the film Avatar it uh, receives around seven hundred sixty one million of dollars the second one was Titanic third one was the Marvel's Avenger but when you make the indexation and you bring the money to a specific period of time the podium changes dramatically actually it changes totally the first one should be gone with wind which more than one thousand one actually one point more than one point five uh, thousand million uh, of dollars then Star Wars and then the sound of music so then obviously inflation gives an advantage to new newer films to receive more money at least in nominal terms but in real terms or the with indexation the situation is definitely different so then, we're going to discuss a little bit about real and nominal interest rates. So then, the, 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 the rates make you the possible to make comparison in different periods of time. Because as you have already noticed and you, you knew before, a dollar one year ago is not the same dollar as today. Why? Because you cannot buy the same quantity of things with this dollar you can buy less usually and then when you deposit your money in saving account actually you don't receive almost anything but between quotation mark the bank returns you different amount of money in the future hopefully uh, hopefully it should be higher then on the other side of the coin when you borrow money it's similar because you are going to pay more money and actually it's extremely much more the money that you need to repay for your bank. Then imagine my situation. Diego deposits one thousand dollar in a bank, and then imagine a rate of ten percent annually. So in one year, I'm going to have one thousand one hundred dollars. The question is, am I richer in one thousand dollars? You would say yes, obviously, because you're going to receive one hundred dollars. Obviously, if you have paid attention to this chapter, it's like you need to first 
look at the situation of prices look at the situation of purchasing power if the purchasing power is better and you can buy more with this one hundred one thousand dollars instead of one thousand dollars one year ago your situation have improved otherwise you are worse or maybe you are the same so naturally I don't have this one thousand dollars one hundred dollars more and that's it because the price during this time have gone up so imagine the situation I buy movies on YouTube and each movie imagine again hypothetical situation ten dollars it's too expensive right so my deposit was uh, equivalent to 100 movies so I could have paid one hundred 100 100 movies with these one thousand dollars so how many movies I can buy now that's the real question let's go to different scenarios first imagine zero inflation what's that you know the CPI stay the same so the prices stay the same so then you're going to have the same price of the movie and now you're going to buy 110 movies instead of 100 so then you had actually a net increase of 10% of purchasing power Next, now move to the 6% inflation situation with a 6% inflation you are going to have now a price of that movie $10.60 and then the movies that you can buy should be the ratio of the final value which is 1100 over 10.60 and then around approximately you can buy 104 movies then you are better but you are better a real increase of 4% not 10% because you faced an increase of that good what uh, it was the movies or it was the movie and then 10% inflation now the price of the movies uh, are 11 and then the ratio 1100 over 11 you will have 100 and then the real increase is 0 percent so then with a 10 percent inflation and a 10 percent of rate then you're going to have at the end of the day 0 percent improvement you're exactly the same then think about 12 percent inflation now the price 11.20 then the ratio should be this one and then actually you are going to buy just uh, approximately uh, approximately 98 movies then you're going to buy two less two movies less so the decrease should be around two percent of purchasing power if you think about deflation which means the decrease of the prices now instead of paying ten dollars you're going to pay nine point eight dollars and then the ratio should be one thousand one hundred over nine point eighty and then you're going to buy movies uh, one hundred uh, twelve instead of one hundred before so then the increase of twelve of purchasing power so now you are realizing that is not about the real rate or I mean the rate that you're going to receive is what you are going to buy with that money afterwards so then here is an interesting graph that we're going to discuss a little bit because uh, the change in dollar amount is the nominal interest rate but when you correct for inflation is what we call the real interest rate so the equation should be the real interest rate should be the nominal minus inflation if inflation is higher than nominal you're going to face negative real interest rates if you are going to face the opposite inflation lower than nominal interest rate naturally you're going to face a real interest rate positive here is an interesting graph that we have in the y-axis the interest rates we have the blue one the nominal interest rate and the red one which is the real interest rate the gap between these two uh, lines is not more than we call the inflation so the gap is closer to zero is when we are talking about zero inflation so here we see here an important uh, an important gap during this uh, 1980s the same thing of oil prices as an important gap and then here we see when they are so close so inflation is close to zero and then when the real rates 
are above zero is because it at least compensate inflation and you're having return a po or positive returns. At that time after 2012, real rates are getting negatives. So f is what we talk nominal are lower than the inflation rate. Then conclusion. The norm is that dollar value is not stable. And for this reason, you cannot compare salaries 10 years ago, prices 10 years ago, compare directly to now. Now, you need to make some compensation with indexation. So then, prices indexes are low to make comparison. So we already have a look to the GDP and prices, but we are not talking about the termination, about how the GDP changes and how the price changes? No. We just have a look to measurement to GDP and measurement to prices. But these, uh, these settings or these tools that we are getting that are going to be uh, really important and determinant to go and to move to interpretation to these two uh, situations, GDP and prices. So we're going to start to discuss about the changes of long run of GDP and we're going to have a look to some determinants of saving, investment and real interest rates and finally try to understand the, the short run uh, fluctuation. So I hope you have learned something about the measurement of prices and you can think uh, more about it. Uh, naturally you have learned something about it if you have any comment any situation that maybe was not okay for you I'm more than open to hear that comments remember this is subtle I probably I have mistakes but this is the interpretation of this chapter I really appreciate if you like it subscribe and thumbs up bye bye